Alright, today's pet spotlight will be on Crusher. Crusher is basically Ore Eater. It's like the exact same thing as Ore Eater, except it has different breeds available to it than the Ore Eater does. They also do kind of share some breeds and the stats are a little bit different, but it's essentially Ore Eater. Uh, Ore Eater is a tier 1 pet because of shell armor. Crusher has shell armor and is thus also a tier 1 pet. All the benefits that Ore Eater shares with shell armor, he does as well. Shell armor, for those of you who don't know, uh, is a really overpowered ability that is only available to three pets. The Hydraline, the Ore Eater, and Crusher. Uh, Ore Eater and Crusher, basically. <laughs> the same thing as I've been saying over and over. Uh, shell armor is so good that all breeds of Crusher are tier 1. It doesn't matter which one you use. Obviously some breeds are going to be better than others. I personally like the HH breed, but the Power Power breed's pretty damn good too because it does increase how much the shell armor absorbs. But you'll be absorbing quite a bit at any level of it. HP breed's fine too, PS breed's fine. Uh, Crusher seems to just have more health than the Warrior does. And the HH one's pretty nice because he is a humanoid type. So having more health does benefit the humanoid ratio where they get healed up for 4% of their health after every turn. Okay, so where do you get Crusher? This is probably the biggest difference between Crusher and Ore Eater. Crusher is a lot easier to get. You just buy him from the vendor right next to your garrison table in your garrison. Uh, I'll have a video on the bottom, on the right hand of the screen for where the vendor is located on both Alliance and Horde garrisons. Uh, it, it's just like right to the left of the table and it's a thousand gold and you get one of the random breeds since all breeds are good You'll be fine uh, when I bought the two for this video <laughs> they were Both HH breeds <laughs> Which is the one I already have so I'm probably gonna just sell these in the auction house and try to get different breeds because I would kind of like to have the power power breed the power power breed has 333 attack while the power power breed of or eater only has 317 attack and the or eater has kind of low health on that breed too uh, out of all of the, out of Crusher and Ore Eater, probably the best one is the SS breed Ore Eater because he has a crap ton of speed. You have a higher than normal chance of getting an extra turn of shell armor because if you go first in the turn when you use shell armor, it's going to work that turn you use the shell armor and it's still going to count for the extra three turns that it stays on you. So if you're fast on your opponent, you basically get an extra turn of shell armor which makes the SS breed the best. Although shell armor is so good, even if you only have it for three turns up, uh, you're still golden. All breeds are, are tier one. It's not like uh, other pets where only certain breeds are tier one, like Arctic Hare, only the SS breed is tier one. Uh, the Death Adder Hatchley, only the SS breed is tier one. The other ones aren't anywhere near. Same thing with like uh, Emperor Crab, only the Power Power breed is tier one. Uh, one more example, the Fiendish Imp, yeah this one right here. Only the SS breed is tier 1 because he's really fast. Power Speed breed is serviceable but it's not tier 1. It's like a tier 2 pet because he really needs that really high speed. But uh, you don't have to worry about that with Crusher. All breeds are tier 1. Doesn't matter. Okay, so outside of Shell Armor, I'm pretty sure I stressed enough just how good it is. He also has this little ability called Body Slam. Body Slam is balanced around the notion that it has a turn cooldown and it does recoil damage to you in exchange for doing a crap ton of damage. 432 damage is a lot. That's nothing to sneeze at. The thing is, if you have shell armor up though, you don't take recoil damage. So <laughs> that's you're basically just hitting really hard without the downside. Which is like one of the reasons uh, Ore Eaters are just really good pets. On top of that, uh, his number one abilities, they're both they are both good. You can use either one. Uh, the only difference between Crusher and the Ore Eater is the fact that he has Crush available as one of his basic attacks. Crush has a chance of doing a lot of damage almost as much as a Body Slam, but it also will just as likely do, you know, crap damage for 200 damage. 220 damage is not a lot. It'll sometimes just hit somewhere in between 220 to 411. If you hit on the high end though, if you're a really lucky son of a gun, You'll probably want to take Crush because that hits a lot, but you're better off with just using Acid Touch for a few reasons. Ore Eater always goes with Acid Touch too, but you can go with Punch. Punch just does normal damage, it doesn't have a, a range of damage like Crusher can, where Crusher will either hit for a little bit or a lot or in, in between 
punch will always hit for the same amount of damage, so it's safer. It's like the vanilla option. It's fine. You can take it if you want, but here, let me explain to you why Acid Touch is better. Okay, Acid Touch. It does decent upfront damage, 172. That's pretty bad for a basic attack, but it's not half bad for a dot because it's about half the damage of a basic attack. And for the four turns the dot's gonna be up, you'll be doing uh, about a uh, basic attack's worth of damage of a dot later, as long as you it does its full course. The thing is, dots are really good on humanoid types because your racial goes off, uh, recovers 4% of the maximum health of damage is dealt in the round, no matter whether your pet's out or not. So if you put a dot on your opponent's pet and then you switch out and your opponent's pet switch out or stays in, doesn't matter. Just as long as that pet is taking the dot damage, you'll heal up for 4% of your health every turn. So during the turn you're throwing up shell armor and you can't attack your opponent that turn, it'll take a little tick of the acid touch dot and you'll heal up during that turn. The dot is really good just for those heals. So even if you're about to switch out your ore eater, make sure you put up a dot because you'll get 4 turns of heals out of that. Uh, 4 times 4, you'll get like a 16% heal. Actually, you know, I think it applies at that turn, so you actually get 5 turns of it. Because the turn you put it up, plus the 4 turns after. So it's like a 20% heal if you manage to throw the dot up and then switch out. Which is uh, not an insignificant amount, especially if you have a HH breed out who has quite a bit of health. 20% of 1700 is like a little over 300, uh, 300 heal. That's why you see most ore eaters take acid touch over their other basic ability. It's all about that heal. Plus, you're going to be using body slam off cooldown anyway, and during the turn you're using body slam, I mean, that you're waiting for body slam to come off cooldown, you usually just use acid touch. And also during the turn you use shell armor, you're not actually doing any damage, so it's nice to have that dot up. The dot just beats out the basic attack quite a bit. That being said, it's not a bad choice to take straight up damage either. You're going to be doing all the, all the damage in the world you need with Body Slam because it only has a turn cooldown, you'll be using that off cooldown. But there can be a case to made where just doing straight up damage, like it's not bad, but the Acid Touch is, is better. And I suggest it, but it's not absolutely necessary. Okay, so uh, I'm pretty sure that's it really. Shell Armor is OP, they don't take any recoil damage from Body Slam, which is kind of OP. And the dot is great, don't ignore it over crush, but you can take crush if you want, and you'll be just fine.